Hello, hello everyone. Good morning to you all. Thank you so much for joining us for today's International Student Orientation Information Session. Next slide, please. Okay, so let us go over some event logistics so that you can understand a bit of how this event will work. You are able to see and hear us. However, we cannot see nor hear you. You will be able to ask questions to us um, in the comment box. So the comment box is actually located at the top of your screen. There are two chat bubbles that are there and um, the box will actually open at the end of the presentation because we want you to have a chance to listen to all the information in case we do answer um, the question that you are preparing to ask. There also is the option for closed captioning. So if you do, if you would like um, language support in this area, you can click on three dots and they are located at the top of the screen. And um, if you click on it, it will say turn on live captioning and you can access closed captioning that way. Um, next slide, please. OK, and here I will call um, Leticia Zamaripa, who is our director of global engagement to make a presentation. Thank you, Tamara. Welcome and thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. We really hope that you will enjoy the session. Uh, my name is Leticia Samarripa. I am Director of Global Engagement in charge of the Intercultural Programs Office. Today, we will have the Indian Student Association presenting to you. Uh, just as reference, the Indian Student Association is one of the most active cultural student organizations on campus. They represent the most important link to our Indian student community at UT Dallas. So you are in very good hands. I am positive you will, you will find an amazing support from them. We work as an office very closely and together. We would like to assist you uh, with your transition into campus life. So our appreciation goes to ISA. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce um, Raj Kumar. He is the president of the Indian Student Association and he will be presenting for you today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Leticia and uh, Tamara for giving us the opportunity to connect with the new students. Those are coming for the uh, spring 22 session. So should I present the slide from my desktop or uh, I have to just say next? Uh, yes, Raj, um, you can just say next slide. OK, so next slide, yeah. Yeah, so first thing is you have made it. Congratulations to all the future comets. You have made it into one of the STEAM university in the United States of America and ISA wishes best of luck to all the students waiting for the decision. Maybe they will get the decision and they will be the part of the spring 2022 session or maybe the fall 2022. At this point of time, there would be a doubt and inquiries and so many questions and ISA is here to help you guys. So next slide. First thing comes, what is ISA? So the Indian Student Association is a non-profit social cultural organization within the Student Organization Forum at UT Dallas. And the Indian Student Association at UTD represent 2,500 plus Indian students enrolled at our university. And as Leticia told you, largest Indian student community and alumni network with 6,000 plus member in the state of Texas. We manage fall and spring pickups. Those are the great event that we did for the student. Like in this fall, we picked more than 800 plus student and we are expecting 400 plus students for the spring 22. We provide temporary accommodation and basic supplies to 1000 plus incoming student each year and temporary accommodation 
may be changed due to COVID uh, situation that is around us. So giving temporary accommodation parameter will change. It might change. We have our three different scholarship for the students and that is goes depend upon the basis of the committee's decision. They review your profile and review your uh, GPA, review your uh, extracurricular activities that you will do during your uh, tenure in the uh, UTD and they see that what is your progress and depend upon that they provide you three scholarship for the Indian student. We organize 15 plus event and celebrate Indian festival around the year. As everyone knows that India is so diverse country, so we organize events or festivals from all over the states. So you will not feel that that you are not at your home. So you will definitely enjoy different event we organize. So I will tell you in the uh, next slide or that what are the events we organize during the whole session. We conduct three plus webinar for the prospective students before their arrival at UT Dallas and we inform them about what are the services we provided. So that will help you guys in the transition from India to United States. We assist 800 plus Indian students in their transition to US by personalized mentoring through buddy program. Buddy program will help you to mentor. They will help you in selecting your course. They will help you in what are the uh, technology you have to learn so that you can get the job or get the internship and you can follow your career path. Next slide. Now first I want to introduce my team. So our faculty advisor is Professor Gaurav Sekar and he's program director for MS Business Analytics. Many of you knows who are enrolling in business analytics program. So he is our faculty advisor and this is our team for ISA 2021 to 2022. Rajkumar, me, I am presenting here. So I am president for the ISA for this tenure and Ekans Gupta is the vice president. Can you say the next slide? Yeah, thank you. And uh, Siddhartha Agrawal is the general secretary and Meet is our treasurer and Richa Sukla is our public relation officer. All the posts, all the forms that you will get, that will get by Richa Sukla and all the WhatsApp group links also and she's managing all the media content as well. Next slide, please. SRS Sangle is our SOC officer and Prasad Mule is event and logistic officer. Bhavav Desmok, he is also event and logistic officer. Shravya, she is also event and logistic officer. And last but not the least, Dharni, she is also event logistic officer. And Neil is also, uh, next slide. Neil is also our event and logistic officer. Next is Pranali Savan. She is our finance officer and Sakshi Singh. She is our design and creative officer and those PPT I am using right now. She designed that. She designed so many good posters that you will see around all the events that we do. Ria Sood. She is also our uh, design and creative officer and Pooja Sarma. She is our social media officer. Next slide please. Rosni Dhami, she is our social media officer. Anand Arnab, all the website links, all the updation and all the details that you will get on the ISA website is handled by this Anand guy, Anand Arnab. And Sidra Ima, she is our content officer. Sally Sriram is our event officer in anchoring and Dhara Patel also in anchoring team. And next two webinar, maybe they, they will speak and they will uh, present for you guys. Next slide, please. Sandeep Sandeep is our uh, sports officer and Raz also is Rajkumar Gupta is also a sports officer and we organize so many sports event during the Odan that will go around one month and that is the one of the biggest event that ISA organized for the people those are really interested in is Odan and Chinmay Patel media and photography head and all the music performance are done by the ISA team and Dibyans Dahiya and Akansa Jagdale is the team of ISA Music. And last but not the least, Aarti and she is our dance officer. 
Next slide, please. So events, the purpose of ISA is to provide an opportunity for all the students of Indian origin to interact and share the joy of culture and heritage of India and to educate others by bringing awareness. We organize nine festivals celebration around the two semester and we organize Fall West 2021, Udan Sports Fest and the flagship event is Sangam. Next, next slide. So event we organize Fall West 2021, get to know your batchmate. This is just like a welcome party we do in India or fresher party we do. In the same way we organize Fall West, different event we do in during the Fall West like fashion show, music performance, dance performance, like stand up comedy. And it is like an interactive session for the all the students who are joining the fall or spring tenure. They try to get interact with each other. They find some groups. They find some friends there. So this is like a welcome party or fresher party for you guys. And the Odan that is specifically for those people who are really interested in sports and it goes for a one month. It goes for one month for every weekend and we organize the different uh, sports like uh, pool, cricket, box cricket, uh, volleyball, badminton, tennis, uh, chess, carom. There are so many games that uh, ISA organized during the Udan and uh, this time we get around 400 plus participants from the UTD and uh, it was a one month long event we completed on uh, in last eight days. It took eight days to complete this event. So it is a one of the biggest event that we do in fall semester. Next slide please. Next event is Sangam. Sangam is so your leadership skills event and that we organize in spring and in that uh, event you will participate and uh, there are one or two celebrity will be there. They will be performed for you guys and there uh, you can participate as a dance team, as a music team or you have any singing or whatever the talent you have. You can show that on that stage with a law. So many people those are attending this session in front of them and it was the flex. It is always the flexive event when everyone was enjoying the crowd that time we got for the yes, Sangam event and from last two years we are not able to organize the Sangam. So I hope this year we will organize and everything go according to our plan. Pandemic don't change anything. Next slide please. And yeah, I week uh, I week also defending I week is uh, basically we tell us the different organization at the UTD and we try to interact with uh, our culture and what our what is uh, basically we told everyone that what is uh, different in India and what try to interact with other culture as well and learn from other culture and teach uh, what is the, the Indian culture, why it is so diverse and what is the uh, different cuisine we use, different uh, dresses we use, why are so uh, Indians wedding are so fat and all. So these things we present in I week session. And there are some uh, pictures that you will see from the event that we did this time for the fall 21 after two year of this long pandemic. So the, this, these are the picture from the these are the picture from the, our Independence Day 2021 and we did a flash the flag host uh, waving and around 400 participants joined this event because this was uh, on 15th August and some students are still coming on the till the date of 23rd. So we got around 15 uh, 400 participants for this event. Next slide please. And uh, this event is Ganesh Chaturthi and this is, was the one of the biggest event that we did for this uh, fall initial days and that was uh, uh, we did celebrate the first time in person Ganesh Chaturthi in, at UTD and we got a good response. That was a two days event 
and uh, every day in the morning we do some uh, aarti and puja and we every time we get more than 500 to 600 people at that time and that was with all the, we do visarjan with dhol and all the nagada was there and everyone can dance and everyone can enjoy the event so this was the biggest fun for the first time we celebrate ganesh chaturthi at the utd next slide please and like uh, i said there is one event for always for the incoming student every year so these are the pictures from the fall west there are some pictures from the, our uh, professor is there and more maybe you guys know the uh, rob adams the chai and coaching one guy he is there and uh, professor gorav sekar is there and other uh, some performance are there like uh, some classical performance some music performance and some there are some uh, fashion show pictures as well so this is the one first session that everyone should attend because and this event most of the people got some friends and they can try to connect with other people they are from uh, different uh, states or different languages and you can connect with them you can make friends at that event next slide please and navratri we celebrate that in october 2021 and in that we played garva and we have a dj and all so that was uh, around 4 to 5 hour events and everyone can come with a new dress up because they get the chance to dress up for the garva especially so they came with the all the dress up and all and they start enjoying the event by performing dance for the like uh, in the gujarati style we do so we celebrate the garva as well and navratri at that time we do puja and then we celebrate garva thing and that was that is only a one day event uh, uh, like in india we generally celebrate it for 9 days or 10 days but here we only celebrate for one day and on the same day we do first puja then we celebrate garva next slide please and uh, the most famous event we always celebrate in india that is diwali so these are the pictures from the diwali celebration and i will tell you one thing that this time we are celebrating any event after pandemic so every time it is very uh, difficult to manage all the crowds and because uh, there is no public gathering should be there like more of most of the people and in isa event you will get a uh, hundreds of people will be there so this time in diwali we get around thousands of people they are at the plain that is the common area you will see there are some different event will goes on so we celebrate the diwali at the plain and we celebrate it this time on 4th of november the same day of the, we have diwali and there are some pictures from the doc, uh, decoration team we did and there are some dj their food stalls are there you this you will always have a food on diwali and that is fully indian style next slide please and uh, these are the pictures that we got from republic day 2020 because uh, we did not celebrate till now and last time we celebrate that is in virtually so we did not get a chance to click the pictures for the republic day but i hope with when you guys will be here and we will celebrate republic day together this time and we will change this picture and i hope a lot of crowd will be there for the republic day next slide please and the sangam so sangam is this also the picture from the sangam 2022 and bohemia was the celebrity who came and who performed there and uh, there are some classical performance some fashion show is there and some stand up comedy is there and there are some talent show is there so if you have uh, any talent and you have any leadership skills you can show there you can participate you can volunteer and that is the biggest flexive event of utd isa so i hope this time we will able to uh, organize this event because this is the biggest event for us and we are planning and we are working from now only for this event so everything will go always on plan don't we get any pandemic issue again so i hope this will go according to our plan next slide please and this is our isa dance crew the most of the event in which the isa will perform and this is the crew that aarti handles 
it's have uh, around more than 40 students those are always actively participate for every dance performance they perform in uh, uh, independence day they perform in uh, uh, ganesh chaturthi they perform in diwali as well so they perform almost in every event and if you really interested in performing perform and dance in front of uh, I, everyone who is there a lot of crowd is there just please come and join the isa dance crew and you will get to know there are so many interesting people in that field and they are really interested to work with you guys next slide please and this is our isa music crew and those are handled by uh, divyansh daya and akanksha jagdale they are super singers literally if you listen them you will feel wow how he is doing a master he should be a singer and all so and uh, devyans and uh, akancha they both are literally they are so pro in the music things and they handle all the events music uh, activities like for the all the event independence day to diwali they performed so many performance till now and i always like to listen uh, to see their performance in the future as well as in even uh, republic day also they will perform or in sangam also they will perform so i am excited to see their performance again and again so many times next slide please so ut dallas indian student association topic of discussion will come now so first topic is hold and wadi program and housing option we have pre arrival orient orientation and navigation from the airport and at last i will ask open the floor for you guys to have a, if you have any question you can ask next slide please so don't let the holds hold you back the holds on your account may prevent you from registering to classes and that can be a international hold that can be enrollment holds and that can be general holds you may have to contact your graduate advisor to some holds to be removed like if you have a transcript holds you can uh, email to the graduate or admission team they will remove the holds for the one semester and you can submit it in the next semester or with you can come up with the uh, your transcript and you can drop it in the admission administrator building and that's how you can submit the your transcript as well and you can remove your hold and there are some enrollment hold you can directly connect with the, your admission enrollment team or there are some international road for that you can connect with isso so these are the some holds that most of the student face and these holds can be removed just you have to connect with a right person at the right time and you are able to register for the class next slide please and uh, this program this pro body program so this is how isa helps uh, incoming student after they came here so the deep uh, the body program assign each registered incoming student with a mentor belonging to the same branch of study who will guide you in answering all your non generic question once register you will assign a mentor and then contact details of your mentor will be shared with you you can stay in contact with him until you adapt to the culture at utd so there are so many questions that you will face like in general question we can give you the how what are the things you need to pack what are the how you can sign the lease and all these things we can cover in the isa webinar there are some things that uh, there are some orientation in that icp will do and in your student uh, when you come here you will attend some webinar in that you will understand what are the common questions for your uh, academic related you can get the answer from there but there are things that you can ask some always expect that there is should be a someone who can guide you which uh, track path you should choose according to your interest and uh, what are the subject you should choose and what are the job opportunities there and what uh, which area you should go according to your uh, skills so you can ask all these question from your body and the most important thing is that uh, your body will be from your same branch so he have a idea what is going on and what is the field and what is the scope of that field so you can ask anything related to your uh, study related to your uh, personal life like how you manage the pressure how you handle how you easily transfer from the uh, is india to us transition and how you handle the four subject or three subject there are so many questions that we got every time that it is easy to handle four subject or not so these type of 
basic questions you can ask from your buddy and uh, i will share the link uh, after the webinar with you guys in all the whatsapp group we have uh, regarding buddy program and you will assign you will get your buddy before you will land here next slide please yeah so yeah i am uh, just monitoring all the whatsapp group that you already join most of the people and i'm seeing most of the students are looking for the roommates so there are some popular housing option there is two side of university east side and west side east side dart frequency is 30 minutes so actually for every community nearby to university there will be a dart facility from the university and you will get the bus after every 30 minute at east side and there are some community there like north side marquis at waterview padera estates of richardson and home of prior Perrier springs and Perrier creek as well the north side is the community that is on the walking distance from the utd only and that west side there are estates on frankfurt parlon frankfurt as well palencia courtyard at camper and chatham court then the bus frequency is 20 minute and the walmart also nearby the west side so if you live in the west side community and Walmart target is nearby only, but at east side Tom Tom is there that you can get the, your groceries and your essential things from there. So there is only one major difference is the bus frequency and east side it's 30 minute and west side it's 20 minute. So please uh, decide according to that only because uh, no one wants to get late for your classes. So just uh, choose the community according to your feasibility that yeah you can wait for 30 minutes or you can wait for 20 minutes next slide please yeah there are for every housing application you have to just uh, search the uh, community name and you will get uh, one portal and you can register log in there register there and even you can pay your administration fees and uh, so that you can finally your lease will be signed before you came here it should not like that we will pay on the spot at least you should pay your administration fees so that your lease will be finalized you don't need to came here then you have to find a apartment because it is very difficult if you do not get any temporary accommodation and within three days sometimes it is difficult to find accommodation so i am requesting everyone please sign your lease before came here and it's fine to pay the administration fees Thank you so much and uh, please next slide. So these are the all the forums and electricity sign and forms like uh, pet agreement, rental agreement, cause and agreement and details electrical energy supplier. So like if you are signing any lease, you have to first uh, sign all the agreement related to your electricity connection. So you have to first take the electricity and Wi-Fi connection and electricity connection is mandatory before your uh, lease sign contract is finalized. So you have to first find your electricity connection, then you can finalize your lease agreement. And the documents you generally need for signing any lease is your I-20 that all of you have, passport definitely you all have, and visa stamp as well. And that is optional things. It's not a mandatory for the most of the community, but it might be for a one or two community it required your visa as well. So how to pay for housing either by the demand draft or you can electronic money transfer fly wire or money online. So there are some community that allows you to just uh, uh, submit uh, or uh, just pay for the admission fees and the remaining first month rent you can come here and get the demand draft from the Walmart and uh, you can pay according to that only with your demand draft. Most of the community don't take uh, the first month rent they ask you for the demand draft and they will take uh, that you will get from the Walmart here next slide please so there are pre arrival modules and orientation pre arrival modules and orientation are online videos that you will watch prior to your arrival that will help you prepare for life in the United States and your transition to UT Dallas those are most helpful when completed soon after admission to UT Dallas. So I will request you all pre do all the trainings that that you required 
and all the was some videos and was some orientation videos and pre arrival modules. Those modules are optional this year for all F1 and J1 new student overseas student, but we highly recommend you go through them because those will help you what things you should do and what things you should not do. And there are things that should be always in mind before doing anything. So next slide, please. There are some general etiquettes. I would everyone like to. Please uh, focus on this slide because this is uh, one of the important slide. Be nice and courteous and smile to people you meet. It's a general etiquette that you have to follow here. So thanks every person you meet, even the bus driver, Uber driver, people at the restaurant before you leave. It is a courtesy to hold doors for a people following you. Traffic rules following lanes, stopping lane before the zebra crossing and not opening doors on the way. Crossing roads, pushing the button to indicate you want to cross, wait for the walk signal and then cross the road. If someone is providing you service, give tips. No tips is, is an insult here. Seek permission before touching pets and babies and plagiarism. Plagiarism is the most important thing that you will face here when you submitting your assignments and also everyone should, if some professor assigns someone to an individual work, then you have to do your individually. There should be. There is no algorithm should be there and every report will generate and uh, action or ethics committee will take the decision on that and this is very strict thing here. So I will always like to do not copy your assignment and all and follow these general etiquettes that before. Once you are here, next slide please. You should board the bus from front door only. Oh, there is a two door will be there in every bus, but you have to board the bus from the first door and wait for other to deboard the bus first. Avoid controversial topics that may include politics, religion, sexual orientation and racism, etc. Asking how many marks you scored on the test, it is offensive here. Please don't ask until you are friends with that person. Don't ask how much money makes or how much one has paid for the high end items like house, car, etc. In general, you can call anyone by their first name. If you don't know, it's better to call by sir or madam. Spitting is not uh, acceptable in a public areas. If you cannot avoid in cold, use tissue. Burp is not compliment for chef over here. Say excuse. Also use deodorant. People can turn up saying that you are standing on your face. So these are the some basic general etiquette that you have to follow once you are here. Next slide, please. So uh, now I am opening floor for if you have any question, just post it there and we are happy to help you guys. Patricia, over to Thanks. you. Yeah. Thank you so much Raj for presenting all this very helpful information that we know is going to aid the new incoming international students in their adjustment to UT Dallas and also to the United States. Um, we will now go ahead and open the chat feature. So at the very top um, there is uh, there are two chat bubbles with a question mark. You can post your questions there that you have for ISA um, and Raj will answer them for you. But before we get into the questions, I just would like to clarify um, maybe a few things really quickly. So the first thing is in regards to the international student orientation, the hold um, that you would see on your account if you are an incoming spring 2022 student. That hold, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past, we typically had a hold that was placed on your account. Um, however, um, the holes have now been uh, removed from your account. So if you are a new incoming student for spring 2022, 
um, you should not see a hold on your account for international student orientation. And that is because we are trying to make the class registration process accessible for students so that they're able to register as soon as they can for the classes that they would like. Um, however, registration for orientation is a requirement. So registering and um, completing international student orientation is required. It's not optional. So it is required for you to register for orientation. And if you go to our website, you'll see the two different um, formats that you can choose from. Option one is the traditional format um, where you can attend an in-person date if you're available to do so and also complete your pre-arrival modules. And option number two um, is where you complete your pre-arrival modules and you do the um, online version of orientation because as we know, some people are not able to um, physically um, be in person for the dates that we have. So just to clarify, orientation um, is required. It's, it, it's required for you to complete that. Um, and so we just recommend for you to go ahead, go to our um, International Student Orientation webpage, register for it. Um, and um, so that way, um, on the first day of class, so hopefully you have taken care of that requirement. Um, everyone that has completed orientation, whether they did it in person or they did it online, then we will not have to put a hold on your account. So right now there is not a hold on your account and you can register for classes. However, if you do not take care of your orientation requirement by uh, the first day of classes, then we will be putting a hold on your account because it is required for you to take care of that. So just wanted to clarify that um, aspect of it. And um, I would like to say that um, we were uh, uh, looking forward to actually having uh, Jordan uh, with us from UTD Big Howdy to kind yeah. of explain about the transportation system. Yeah. I know that Jordan is actually on the call right now. We have been emailing back and forth, but um, for some reason, um, they are only able to uh, attend the session, but not actually get in as a presenter, and I'm not quite sure why. So, um, Jordan, if you can hear me, um, if you would like to, um, if there's any information that you would like for me to, to share, I, I don't know if you want to do that, you can email it to me and then um, I can, you know, take the time to read that information about the, the transportation aspect. Um, so if you want to work on that, um, you can um, just email me and let me know. OK, so in the meantime, we're, we are going to go to the chat section. So I'm going to see what questions we have in here. Um, and then also, Raj, you said that you're going to post some links for the, the WhatsApp group, correct? Yeah, I have okay. uh, already sent uh, ICP, I think sent all the WhatsApp group links. So if someone still need a WhatsApp group link, just uh, they can connect with me or I will let you know guys and I will give you the WhatsApp link as well. Okay, um, yeah. well, I mean, we haven't posted it in the chat so far this morning. Yeah, actually, uh, we just want to everyone will have only one whatsapp group link so if someone oh, wants gotcha, to, yeah, gotcha. yeah i see okay okay so sure if anyone is interested in joining the groups just uh, they can connect with me or uh, i will add you to that group guys so i think okay. we already have a 450 students in those groups so if still somebody did not get a chance to join the group we will give them yeah okay sure okay and, okay, and also, so, um, if if I can just to clarify, I'm yeah. sure uh, the participants might have different type of questions. Yeah. The ones that are institutional will be very pleased to support Raj, uh, and we can answer those. And the ones that are more related to all the services that you offer, uh, of course, they will be addressed to you. Raj. Yes. OK, so the first question we have for you, Raj, is yeah. how do I join ISA? Oh, so every student is a member of ISA and for the officer position, we enrolled and uh, opened the position for in spring, uh, like in April last week or May first week. We took the interview process and all and uh, you can just enroll that uh, time and you can uh, we will interview you and according to that 
uh, we will select the officer for the next tenure. OK, yes. all right, thank you. OK, next question is how can I join the ISA dance crew? Yeah, so for that as well, uh, you can just connect with uh, ISA dance, dance officer and she is Aarti. So if you already joined the WhatsApp group, maybe she is also part of that and she will be the admin as well. So you can just directly go there and uh, connect, try to connect with Aarti. So she is handling uh, dance team for the ISA and you have to just connect with her and just say that I'm interested and I'm a Spin 2020 student and I want to perform some dance performance and I hope you will get the chance to perform. Yeah. Thank you. Next question says, um, what if the housing is, <clears throat> excuse me, what if the housing is far, I guess far from campus and DART is not available, mm -hmm. then what should I do? How do I come and how to commute to the campus on a daily basis? Yeah, so if the housing like uh, most of the students lives in nearby the UTD only, but uh, there are some local DART buses also. They are, are not from the UTD one. Also, there are so many buses that tell us tra transit area during that, and those buses are available most of the area. So, but that took some of your time. Like you will just spend one hour, two hour in the commute. So, I will recommend you just get the house nearby to university or where bus or uh, uh, train services available to your house community. Those, those should be your preference first. Uh, but because it takes a lot of your time for the commute to university and no one wants to waste that much time. So please, uh, when you are searching for the accommodation, please search that what are the worst uh, services are available at that location. Yes, great answer. And if, if I can also add to that to give some perspective, um, yeah. this area that the, uh, the university is located in the North Texas area yeah. is kind of an area that is known for traffic. So yeah. just to let students know that, you know, you are not the only person that is in traffic. There are a lot of people that commute mm -hmm. um, throughout, you know, the North Dallas area, whether they're in Plano, Richardson, Dallas, and traffic is a thing here. So kind of you know, um, having to 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 uh, wait a while to get to where you're going to is kind of a thing because it is uh, it is it's a busy area. Like a lot of people want to work here, a lot of people live here. So just be kind of bear that in mind that it's not only you know students or, or international students who are experiencing kind of the commute, but there are other people as well that um, uh, kind of have to be in traffic as well. Um, OK, so here's another question. It says, is temporary accommodation provided for um, incoming students? Yeah, so as always, we provide the temporary accommodation, but from the last two semester, we are not able to due to pandemic because uh, for temporary accommodation also, we need to find a volunteer and sometimes uh, they are not OK during the pandemic time, but we are hoping that this time we will get some volunteer that will help you guys if uh, you need a temporary accommodation and that is only for three days. If you get that, you, that will be for three days and it is not compulsory that you will definitely get the temporary accommodation because things will change according to the condition of pandemic we are facing right now. So and all the students, I'm requesting everyone who is coming for the spring 2022 so finalize your lease and book your flight according to that, like most of the leasing office is closed after five o'clock. So once you will arrive here at about seven o'clock or eight o'clock, then you have to find your temporary accommodation before coming here because you will not get the house key and uh, leasing office people do not give or hand over your keys to someone else. And it is sometimes get a difficulty because we face this type of issue in fall. So I am requesting everyone either uh, you book the flight that came in the daytime or if you are coming tonight, just book any hotel or you find book any temporary accommodation should be a finalized because you will not get your house key at that time. Okay. Great point yeah. and um, thank you so much for answering that question. I know yeah. a lot of students are um, have that questions on their mind yeah. because that is typically yeah. a, a service that we are able to pro extend to students. Yeah.
um, due to the the kindness of volunteers, yeah. um, we are able to we were able to do that. But however, due to COVID, um, I, you know, hopefully people can understand that people might be a little bit. Um, maybe uh, changing up their, their habits and things that they would do in terms yeah. of, you know, people coming in and out of their homes. So if for those who are able to provide temporary accommodations, we definitely wish you all the best if you're able to do that. Uh, but if you do not see any, it just means that um, there are none available because once again, we're still in COVID. So yeah. people are being careful about you know, who they let into their home. And so um, please just be understanding of that. Um, and I hope that you're able to then find, you know, maybe some other type of accommodation that is uh, close close to um, the, the campus, um, as Raj said, you know, as close as possible as you can get. And um, I will actually look for a link um, that I will drop in the chat that um, people can access that um, uh, kind of answers questions about housing and kind of what is nearby in the area and some different options that they could access. Um, okay, so here's another question. Um, it says, okay, it says apart from this, what other orientations are there? I've been told by my mentor there are three. Please clarify about this. Yeah, so like uh, we are expecting around 400, uh, more than 400 plus students from India, and I'm seeing that only around 160 students are attending this orientation. So maybe some of you did not join because of your not available at that time. So we organize a uh, three webinar uh, for the orientation webinar from ISA so that uh, we can tell you about what are the services that ISA offer related to either uh, and how you can uh, move from India to US and what are the services we gave you guys and how we can help you when you for your from your transition from India to United States. So it is like that everyone will attend get the chance to attend the orientation and some of the information be generally convey like pickup thing. So pick up and uh, this buddy program, everything services you are you will get from the ISA. Sorry, <coughs> that is the volunteer uh, basis. So for uh, like pick up, we get help from the big RD people like Jordan and Darren. These guys help us a lot. They are only those do the pickups from the airport. We just communicate with you guys with the student and with the big RD people and I literally say no one can do that time kind of job to pick up 800 and 900 students. So with a, so much efficiency from the airport that Jordan, Darren and their team is working. So this is all services we gave you that is volunteer. So and we are not charging for anything. So we do three orientation every time and from those orientation we inform you guys that what are the services, what are the events, and how you can interact with us and how you can get the chance to interact with other people as well during the orientation during the event so this is the, just a two-way communication for you guys only to give you the information for your transition from india to us okay yeah. thank you yeah. okay um our next question <coughs> excuse me um okay i think we can skip that one uh, our next question says, is it a good option to stay in independent house? Are all independent houses under communities? Yeah, everything is fine. You can live either on campus housing or off campus housing or independent house. It's up to you how much your pocket allowed you. So some student lived in sharing apartments, some student li lived in uh, sharing rooms, depends upon their pockets. So you can yeah, definitely go for the independent house, but just uh, figure out the things, how you will commute from that house to UTD. And that is the important things that where you will give a lot of time for the commute if you are living far from the campus. So just remember this thing only and you can live anywhere where you are part wherever you want yeah okay thank you yes. um next question is what are 
the documents, well, it says what are all, I'm not sure if we can know all, but what are all the documents to be carried in the first folder during immigration? Yeah, so all the documents you required for your visa application, that are the more than insufficient you should hold during your immigration process, like your passport, your visa stamp, your uh, I-20 that you got from the university, uh, your all the documents that is uh, you have with, for your visa appointment, the same document is fine for you for the immigration. OK, yeah. um, next question says. Um, I have. OK, um, I'm not sure if, if, if we're able to answer this, but it says, can you please tell if self transfer in flights should be avoided, especially when other options are extremely limited? I didn't get the question. Could you repeat it again? Sure. Yeah. Can you please tell if self transfer in yeah. flights should be avoided? Especially when other options are extremely limited. Self transfer in flights. I don't know. Yeah, I'm also not getting. OK, the yeah. person that wrote this question, if you would like to clarify what that yeah, means, just connect um, me on WhatsApp. Yeah, send me message on the WhatsApp group or send me message uh, on my personal number. I will uh, get back to you. OK, yeah. uh, next question says what kind of Forex card can we use in Dallas? Yeah, you can go for uh, any Forex card. It's fine. You can go for HDFC one. You can go for X. Uh, anything, anything card is fine. And that card you would just need for one or two days once because once you are here, you will open the account on the same day and you will get access to your account. So it will hardly take just you need a Forex card for one or two or three days. But if you have a Forex card, that will be good because sometimes we require to book the care. Sometimes we have to go to grocery stores on the first day. And at that time you can use Forex card. So I will highly recommend that you should have one Forex card and that you can go for anything depend upon the charges, the loading charges and uh, transaction fees and all. So just check these things once and compare with other uh, provider and decide which Forex card you can go and every card is fine for here. Transaction. OK. Yeah. All right, um, next question says what? What are the parking fees in case we get a car and is the green one better than the orange one? Oh, I think uh, green one is the cheapest one and uh, there are different parking is there like green, uh, yellow, uh, gold is there, I think. So depending upon the uh, nearby to the un uh, your campus some other like green parking is far as compared to other parking so the rates is cheaper as compared to other so yeah you can go and uh, i will share the link as well for that parking and the rates are available there and you, you can see the maps as well that like if you are going coming to the json building and uh, you will see the where are the available parking lots so you can select your parking permit according to that. Okay, and um, I just went ahead. I put in the chat um, the link to the, the website where people can get information about the parking fee structure here. So um, OK, let's see another question that you can answer. Um, OK, it says this question says from Ashray says, how much time will it take to assign a buddy? Their guidance will be helpful for course registration. Yeah, so the thing is that uh, once we all roll out the form for the buddy program, all of you will fill the form. Then we need to do mapping according to your course curriculum. Like someone is in ITM, they have to mentor with the ITM guy only and the same way for the computer science and other branches. So it took some time for one to two weeks because we do everyone should get a one mentor and that is related to from same course. So it took one to two weeks and for the classes you can change your classes uh, even before uh, you join the class here or you are here. Then also be, you have a time to 
change or swap the classes with other class so you can talk to them according to accordingly and you can change your class if you are not interested in that so we will try to do as soon as possible and i will definitely ask my team to forward the links on the whatsapp group where you can register for the body program okay Okay, yeah, because we do have uh, several questions oh, sure that yeah. we're asking about that. Um, okay, and can you share again, because I you, think you did already talk about this, but there are several questions in here asking about where they would be able to, to sign up for temporary accommodations if there are any. Yeah, so once we get the list from the volunteers that we have so many volunteer like we have 100 or we have a 50 volunteer then accordingly we go for the giving you the option that yeah we can provide the temporary accommodation for the spring 2022 until the volunteer is not finalized it is very difficult because uh, if we just roll out the form and we get 100 entries and we hardly get one or five or ten volunteer then it is very difficult to manage so mm -hmm. first we will get the volunteer number then we roll out the form for temporary accommodation at least after within 15 or 20 days we will get the number and we will roll out the form right right so you have to know how many volunteers how many volunteers have. you'll have first yeah. before you can open a form you know because if you you only have as you said three volunteers but then yes. you have 300 people applying yeah then you know, it it will be a, a very difficult system to yeah. manage. So so you have to you have to get that information first. You have to know what your supply is yeah. right yeah. Um, before you can advertise yeah. such a thing. So yes, so hopefully. These, yeah, yeah, please yeah. go so ahead. So this is the information that we provide in every orientation, whatever the updation be like. We are uh, open the form for body, open the form for temporary accommodation. So maybe in the next webinar or uh, maybe on the second webinar, we will give you the information for that as well. So whatever the information is added to us, we provide you guys. So that's that's why we do three orientation for the every perspective uh, session. Right. So basically, if if you if the form isn't open as yet, it means that the information isn't ready as yet. And when yeah. the information is ready, then you will share it and let everybody know, yeah. you know, whatever the the update is to that so um okay um okay so people are asking a, okay i think we already talked about that um okay here's a question here it says this so this is a question about subletting their lease asking how to find accommodations from students already staying there that want to sublet their lease Okay, so there are some groups on uh, Facebook as well, and there are some groups on WhatsApp as well that you can join them. And because some of the students are part of that, those are living here, and either they are moving because of their are uh, they are moving from here because they got the internship or they got the full time opportunity, so they can do subleasing, and you can connect with them on different WhatsApp group as well as on the Facebook group. OK, do you, yeah. can you do you want to quickly share the Facebook? Uh, information again. Yes, um, let me check if I find here, then I will send here right now. Or well, it, it, it is still called Facebook. I was going to say Meta, but I think you're still going with Facebook for this. So there are some Yorkit group is there. Uh, MS in US fall spring 2022. OK. Yeah. Uh, okay. And on Facebook, the, the handle is UTDISA. So for those that are searching on Facebook, if you go to facebook.com backslash UTDISA, that will take you to their main page.
Yeah, yeah. Uh, once I will find the link, I will share it on WhatsApp group. Yeah. OK, OK. Yeah. OK, um, next question. Um, that is about. Tuitions. Um, OK, and just I know so you did mention so I think you did kind of talk about this at the beginning, but this, there's a question asking where can we find the group links? WhatsApp group link? OK, so. Uh, I think uh, most of you got the email from the ICP. I don't know you missed that or not. So first, please try to check it out uh, that you mm -hmm. got the link uh, from the, I, the mail. ICP sent all the students, so all three WhatsApp link are there. And uh, please try to check it once more uh, in your inbox and you will definitely get all the links are the WhatsApp group links are there. If still somebody is not able, they can go to the UTD ISA uh, website and they can connect with any ISA officer. OK, yeah. thank you. OK, um, let's see what is something else? OK, here's a question. It says, is it mandatory to have or name in the leasing agreement? Yeah, so like uh, for uh, everyone who is living at the apartment, their name should be on the lease and this is mandatory thing. Right, yeah. OK, here's another question about the spring bash. Um, I, th I think they're asking if there will be a spring bash. No, 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 there is only a fall bash. We are really sorry, but uh, there is no spring bash. For a spring, we organized this Sangam event that is a huge event and that took a lot of our time to organize that event. So we we will just organize the Republic Day, then we will do this Sangam event. And in that, it's like more than the fall bash or any other event where most of the people will come and you can do the uh, connect with other student as well at the time. OK. Yeah. Tamara, can I interrupt uh, just yeah. because I have seen several questions related to academic registration, which is very important. I know you guys are looking for uh, registration. I, I would like to remind you that as a new student, you cannot uh, as a new international student you cannot register by yourself so the first thing you need to do is to contact your academic advisor in each school and program there is a different academic advisor and we can post the instructions in a minute uh, just as a reminder uh, so please, for any questions concerning which classes to register, how to register, please make sure that you can contact them. As Tamara mentioned a little while ago, your holds should be removed. They are willing, all the academic advisors, they are willing right now to help you register for classes. It's important to do it as soon as possible just because uh, you will have the chance to choose which classes, of course, in agreement with your academic advisor. So uh, that is the most important thing to do concerning classes right now. Contact your academic advisor. Thank you very much. Tamara, uh, you have you are muted. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> OK, here's a question about career opportunities. It says, yeah. how are the career opportunities at UTD? Do they have internships or career fairs? And if so, what are some of the companies that? That are yes, yeah, so for the job as a in a job perspective, uh, yeah, uh, the last semester we attended uh, spring in the spring 21. Most of the career fair was uh, online, but Maybe this time you will get some career fair in person. So UTD organized some career fair and there are so many works of Rekathon will be there where you will get the opportunity to interact with the CXOs and uh, you can connect with them. You can get the job or get the internship at the time and there are so many networking event happen during whole year and uh, during different departments. It is not only a just like career fair for everyone. There are some small event is also going on 
according to department. So in that also there are so many opportunities for you guys to interact and for the internship as well as the full time opportunity. So yeah, for uh, now we are most probably the uh, you will get the in person or uh, career fair. But uh, yeah, we are attending the uh, virtual one only till now, but I hope you all will get the chance to attend in person career fair and UTD provides so many career opportunity for you of even the department wise or for everyone. OK, thank you. OK, um, here's another question. Um, I actually just Googled the answer for this. There's a question about the climate during December and January. Yeah, so, so typically, yeah, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, so the climate is like uh, in December or Jan is similar to what we face in India, even in northern side, they're a little bit cold as compared to uh, to the March or uh, even the summer side in the spring. You will feel a little bit cold, but it is not that much. But yeah, last time we face a snowstorm, but I hope this time we will not get that. So yeah, the weather is almost similar to India. There you will see the rain. Raining season will be there. There will be the cold weather is there, and in summer you will get a 40 to 50 degree Fahrenheit temperature will be there. So yeah, it's almost similar. Yeah, Tamara, you can add any answer to that as well. Yes, and and just to I was trying to find uh, kind of like a specific number. So from what I saw, it says that temperatures can be, you know, in the highs in um, about 62 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 16 degrees Celsius. And then in the lows, you know, they can be in the 40s. 40 degrees Fahrenheit or about five degrees Celsius. So, but of course, you know, it, it can fluctuate depending on other things. But in general, I would say that's pretty much around what it stays. Um, we typically don't get a lot of snow in Texas. Um, we put not even a lot of snow. We don't typically don't get snow i would say yeah um typically you, you, what it may be is ice on the road if uh if it rains the day before and then the temperatures are below freezing then sometimes there can be ice on the road but for the most part there is not um snow um it will be cold you know in those temperatures that we mentioned so okay um here's another question it says is the dart bus free of cost for students yeah. and can we travel around the city in the bus? Yeah, so it is free of cost definitely and you will just have to apply for your Comet uh, Pass from the Comet Card uh, Center and you will get your Comet Card then you can apply for Go Pass and uh, hardly it will take three to five days or business days and you just get, install the app Go Pass and you can just show there to any bus or any train and you you can travel free of cost in Dallas area. Thank you. Um, here's another question. And so, OK, this says, can someone help or guide us in finding on campus jobs or do we need to find it on our own? Yeah, so for on campus job, we have a handshake portal. There are so many opportunities you will get there and you will have to just apply there and for the dining and all all the opportunity are there. So there are so many posting related to either a recreation center to the information technology center or any other even for housing. There are so many opportunity you will get on handshake. So you have to just check it out uh, uh, handshake portal regularly and find on campus software from there. OK, thank you. Um, OK, here's a question. It says, so is staying in the east side not such a good option considering the commute time? No, it is not like like. Uh, it's up to you if you can spend 30 minutes uh, and on the west side you will get 20 minute commute, but there are some community that maybe you will get not. You do not have to pay that much as compared to west side, so it's up to you which uh, how much money you can afford uh, for the apartment. So according to that, you can choose the west side or east side. Sometimes we can spend 10 more minutes if we are saving 100 or 200 dollars. OK, yeah. thank you. 
Um, let's see. Okay, here's another question. It says, well, so this question is in regards to hold. They're saying that there's a school of management hold in their portal. They have sent an email from their UT Dallas email address to JSON, but still ha haven't gotten a response. So I'm not quite sure what the question is. Uh, maybe they're asking for your advice as to what they're supposed yeah, so, to do. Yeah, definitely. If you are sending an email, please uh, beat the standard time. It is. It will be either uh, JSON automatic mail will reply to you that that within three to five days you will get the response because this is the moment is going. They are getting so many emails from almost everyone from the even India from all over the world that those students are going to attend this session, spring session. So they're getting so many emails, so it may take some time, but they will definitely reply you back. OK, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, OK, some of these questions have been repeated. Uh, and, and so just, I guess, maybe just a tip for the questions. If you have posted your question and I haven't read it, it just means that I haven't gotten to it as yet in the queue, so you don't uh, necessarily need to repost it. Um, and sometimes those questions we have already answered, so um, I may not uh, address them specifically. Um, and uh, Tamara, could Jordan be joined? to the session? Uh, I, I don't believe so. OK, well, uh, I might as well just uh, on their behalf. <laughs> they yeah. are uh, Big Howdy is a community. They are community volunteers that partner with our department, partner with ISA, partner with other cultural organizations. And together they help all the incoming students to get transportation from the airport to their final destination. Now, uh, they have a specific website where they are registering students that need to get transportation. So we can post um, on the chat in a minute their website and uh, there is a special icon where it says um, you know airport pickup unless uh, unless Raj you have yeah. agreed to have the registration directly. Yeah, I will send the link because uh, whatever the which link uh, I gave to Jordan uh, actually it is not working. It is uh, not accepting response, so I will update in every WhatsApp group or in our next webinar as well. Okay, yeah. so okay. Uh, yeah. thank you very much. Yes, and but I am, we... uh, yeah, be open the pick up things from 15th of uh, November, so we will do it today only so you can register for the pickups from today only and pick up things like Leticia is saying it is a volunteer thing. It is not any mandatory their service that everyone should have to provide. It is the volunteer thing. Jordan and Big Howdy team, these guys are helping you for your pickup. So please be thankful and from the ISA, I am always thankful to the Jordan and uh, Big Howdy team that how they are handling and how they are helping a student in this way. So yeah, this is just a volunteer thing. It's not a mandatory thing, please. Correct, and yeah. and you know, just going along what Raj shared, uh, I like to keep on emphasizing this. We could not provide this service without them. So mm -hmm. it is a joint effort, but very much they help us with most of the pickups. So uh, yeah, register as soon as you can so we can have an idea about the needs of students uh, that need to be picked up. And, um, and of course, coordinate with Raj for any specific instructions. Thank you, Raj. Yeah. Thank you, Leticia. OK, um, here we have a question about sports. I know that Raj, you spoke about um, Udan. That's um, a, a month long a celebration. But this question says, do we have any college teams for any sports? 
and and how do we join them well yeah so what uh, generally people created some whatsapp group like for the, there are some people those are interested in playing badminton so they created whatsapp group they try to catch on every weekend or depending upon their availability and for utd we have a utd isa comet utd isa cricket team utd comet team is there so there are two cricket team is there from isa and you will definitely if you go to the badminton court you will find so many people are playing there and in that way you can just go there directly play with them and you can make your team for any event like this time we get for cricket we get around 16 teams so they just make like all the students who are interested in playing cricket they just form the team and they participate in the event so if you are interested in any sport just go to the field and you will get so many people that are from the same purpose they are also interested in the same game and you can connect with them you can play with them okay yeah thank you um and also if there is a, a team that you are interested in creating maybe there is a sport that you would like to play but it's not um you know available yeah. then um you can uh, reach out to the university recreation or they're called u rec for short um they would be the kind of the department that deals with kind of uh, you know like intramural intramural sports um and those types of competitive leagues if you do want to do something um at that level Okay, um let's see. So there's a question it says should we get a dart bus pass? Yes. You have to apply from the I think uh, website link is there at UTD website only. There is one link is there so from there you can apply with the comet card. So if you have a comet card then you can apply for that. Right. Yes. Yeah, so once you are here you can go for the comet cards uh, up for i think ssa is the building in which you will get your comet card then on the spot you can apply for the uh, dart was pass right but you have to be once again registered for classes first yeah. um yeah. because that that's the you have to show that you are a student of the school and in order to yeah. be a student you have to be enrolled in classes yeah. so you have to be registered for classes because that will be the proof that you are a student before you can apply for the comet card and then get your dart pass um which is you know no additional cost for the dart pass so it's definitely um worth it to get it um the dart is the the Dallas area rapid transit and that allows you to travel throughout Dallas well wherever the the dart goes within the kind of DFW area so through Dallas through Addison through Richardson etc so it's definitely we always recommend for students to get the dart pass um whenever they are eligible to um get it um okay so here is another question um it's kind of tricky. I'm not sure how to understand it. I don't know, Raj, maybe mm -hmm. you can understand it. It says I have I got I have gotten admit in two programs. Mm -hmm. SE plus CS. Okay. And I want to continue with CS. Will I face any issue in course registration? No, so you can just connect uh, or email with the admission team and if you just want to go for the CS then ask them to just uh, you will just want to go about CS only not with SE or plus CS. So you have to just connect with admission team and they will help you better in this way. Hmm. Hmm. OK, OK. Um, let's see, it's another question. OK, so this well, this is kind of more of an admission question, but it says I have matriculated. As application status, um, what will be the next stage or when will I get the status as I enrolled and what needs to be done from my side for that? No, no, uh, it is in matriculate yeah, means it is in under process. So once you will get the decision that will be either admit or reject. What is the it will so give you the option that uh, uh, application status or application result and it should be either admit or rejects and according to that you will get uh, 
the response from the university. Okay. Yeah. okay, here's another question. Um, this question says, will ISA be, br be bringing bank and SIM providers yeah. to the campus for new students? Yeah, so we are in talk with some uh, banks and for fall we gave the option for the Chase Bank and BBNT and uh, for SIM card we gave the option for T-Mobile. So in the same way we are in talk to them that like they are ready to set up the stall either in JSON but even in the university or uh, in near the west side in any community like last time we did in Chatham Court. So in the same way we are in talk with these people and if they are agree they will set up the booth. So you don't need to just go to the bank or for any SIM card on the spot. You will get the SIM card and you can open your bank account as well. So that is not finalized, but yeah, we are trying like in the same way we did for the fall. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, OK, there is so OK, so here's a question. It says how much time does it take to get the initial I-20? Yeah, so I think uh, two weeks is the standard time that I remember. So it will take around two weeks uh, time for you to get the I-20. Okay. okay. Um, OK, here's a question. It says so this is once again is regarding the WhatsApp group, which you mentioned the, the, the links to the WhatsApp group was sent out via email. Yeah. So please check your email. Um, yeah for an email from intercultural programs. Um, and maybe just, you know, I like to search in if you have an Outlook or whatever type of email you have, maybe just search WhatsApp group and see if that will find the email that way. But uh, here's an email. It says, I have tried all three ISA links. I'm not able to join the WhatsApp group. Could you please help me out? Yeah, so just drop me a message. Uh, I will give you my number, okay? Yeah, I think okay. that will be the better option. So yes, so of course, you know, we're doing the event right now, so you're not able to to to, to troubleshoot and figure out what is happening. Uh, but as Raj says, um, if you message him about it, then um, he can uh, try to look into it. He and his team and they'll be able to get back with you after. Yeah. The event. Tamara, uh, yeah, could you type my number? It is possible for you or um, I, I'm you getting can... the option of make an announcement. Yes, if you click okay. on make an announcement, you can type type it there. Okay, okay. got it, got it. OK, um, let's see if it's another question. Um, OK, so some people are asking about vaccines and vaccination status. Um, I'm not sure if there's someone from the ICP team that could um, put something in the chat about that. But there are several questions about vaccination. So for that, we should probably refer you to the um, CDC website that has updated information about the requirements um, for incoming students and vaccination. Yeah, so I, Tamara, I gave my number and chat box so you guys can just let me know. Just drop me a message that yeah, you are a spring 2020 student and please add me to the group. Then I will add you to the group. Yeah. OK, OK. I see. All right, I think we already did answer that question. OK, here's a question. It says I cannot make the application fee payments using my Indian credit card as well as US credit card. What could be the issue and is there any solution for this? Uh, I also, I, yeah, oh, there's a second part. I also tried mailing the admission team for the last 10 days, but didn't receive any response. So for uh, the transaction fees, I think I did using Indian credit card only. Maybe you can try a different one, but that always works where yeah, Indian credit card works for the admission uh, fees. Oh, Raj, well, I was going to say um, I know so we had um, we had a session with paying your tuition and fees. I wonder if the person is using a visa okay. card. Yeah. Um, I know that there's like a visa card uh, fee oh, that we don't yeah. accept, so it might be the type of MasterCard, you know, 
Right. So it so 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 not visa. Basically, there there are options outside of visa. But if if yeah. if, if if you could look on your card and if it is a visa card, maybe that is what the issue is. Um, but yes, I'm sorry, Raj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can try them with Mastercard as well. Yeah, it may be the possible issue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that could be the issue. Um, is since this is a question about tuition though, there is an office called the Bursar office. The Bursar office is the office that takes care of charging, you know, charges that you have on your account about your tuition and any other fees. So that would be the office to contact. So if you um, email Bursar at utdallas.edu, um, and I will put it in the chat. That would be. I have. I have just posted it, Tamara. Thank oh. you. Okay. Thank you, Leticia. So I think that would take care of that particular question because we, we don't really know how to answer exactly what what the situation is that you are experiencing. So. Um, they should be able to help you with uh, fee payment questions. And also the second part about um, emailing the admission teams uh, team and not being able to hear from them. Um, typically, you know, um, some of the offices right now because it is preparing for, we are preparing for the upcoming semester. A lot of offices will kind of have like an automatic reply um, to them. So I would check to see if there is something, if you did get an automatic reply from admissions and to see what they said in that reply about their processing time. Some offices will say, for example, they might say it's two, you know, 10 days. Some might say it's 10, you know, business days. So that might be a different thing. So maybe if check in to see if they did have anything in their automatic reply about kind of what you can expect in regards to processing time. Um, so I would check that first and, um, you know, I would say 10, if it, if it has been 10 days or maybe 10 business days, then that could be a while. So if you want to send another email as a follow up, then you can do so and say, you know, hi, I'm just following up on this email that I sent, et cetera, et cetera. But definitely first you want to see if you are still, if they are still within their processing time, you want to find that out first. And then if it is outside of that time, then you can send a follow up email to try to get more information. Um, okay, so here is a question. Um, it says, can we register for more courses and drop drop few? Well, I guess it, I guess drop courses after orientation. I'm not sure which orientation they're referring to, but yeah, you can enroll as many courses you want uh, and uh, before there will be a census day and before the census day you can uh, drop any courses and census day I think mentioned in the academic calendar for spring 2022. So you will just check it out. What is the date? And before that day, if you uh, drop any courses, you will get a hundred percent refund. Right. So the academic calendar for spring 2022, if you go to the UT Dallas website and just Google academic calendar uh, spring 2022, it will give you the deadlines that include payment deadlines, class registration deadlines, you know, you know, the there is a deadline by when if you want to drop a class, you have to drop the class by that time. If you are hoping to get a 100% refund and then if you do drop a class after a certain time, then um, you know, then then the percentage of your refund is going to decrease. So if you drop it by, you know, within the appropriate deadline, you can get like 100%, but then like if you drop it after the deadline, it kind of goes down to you maybe only get 70% or maybe only get 30%. So checking out the academic calendar on the UT Dallas website will give you all of those deadlines so you can know how to plan ahead and to organize yourself. Um, okay, let's see. So here, well, OK, here's a course. I think you did kind of mention this in your presentation. It says, how many courses do we have to take in the first semester? I think it's uh, up to you that you can enroll in four courses or you can enroll in five courses that much you can handle upon depending upon your experience, your skills and 
it is not a hard and fast rule that you have to enroll in three courses only you have to enroll in four courses you can enroll as many as you want because uh, it's up to you that how many courses you can handle simultaneously because there are so many assignments you will get from each course and there will be a midterm exams and also you have to cope up with all the subjects so you can go for three to four courses that most of the time a student took like for me i took three seminar courses but my friend they took four courses in the first semester also um you know based on your visa status so if you are an f1 student right there are certain immigration requirements in terms of how many credit hours um you would need to be enrolled in in order to maintain your um visa status so, so that yeah. is i think uh, nine credit hour is a mandatory that you should be enrolled Right, so if you are a graduate student, um, then enroll in, in nine credit hours, um, which roughly can work out to be at about, you know, three classes, right? Three courses, typically, that's typically the case. Um, but that is that, that is the answer if you are an F, a student on the F1 uh, visa. Um, okay, so here's a question. It says, according to you, by when should we arrive to campus before the start of the semester? Uh, I think that is also depend upon the at what date of ticket you are getting. And yeah, you can come one month before your class date will start. So you uh, before one month of your class, so you can come in any time from I think uh, uh, 12th of December to 9th of Jan. So you can come in any time uh, during 2030 and once you will be here you will get to know what are the things around you and uh, if you come late then you will not get the chance for that and once your classes will start you will go with your assignment exam quizzes and all the events those we will get in the university you will attend them so i am just uh, giving a suggestion just come some days before so you will get to know what are the things around your apartment or where you are staying and how you can come to different grocery store or what are the necessary things you can get from which store and all. So you will little bit are comfortable for your next semester. Okay. Hmm. Okay, here's another question. It says, are there any city or cultural tours around Dallas that is offered by ISA or UTD? From ISA, <laughs> there is no such service and uh, yeah yeah so um in terms of city tours uh the the university does not offer city tours the university is really large and uh things here are pretty much broken up into different offices and departments um the intercultural programs office um, is, uh, is the office that would provide opportunities for you to learn about the local culture. Um, in terms of city tours, um, we don't provide uh, city tours per se, but we do provide opportunities for you to learn about the city. So for example, this past semester we offered, uh, there were tickets that were available for you to go to the uh, Perot Museum. Uh, also tickets were offered to go to the Dallas Arboretum. And um, there are also virtual events as well for you to learn about the area. Actually, recently just did an Instagram live that spoke about the different um, uh, cultural resources that you can access and cultural events and programming that is in the city. Um, but the Comet Card Office is the office that typically will advertise kind of events that are available if there are any discount tickets um, for students, etc. So the Comet Card Office is an office that typically has a list of um, some of those events that you would be able to just, you know, you you would access uh, by by yourself. But if our office, which is intercultural programs, if we have some kind of event that, um, you know, will take you to some kind of um, event that is happening in a group, then that is something that of course you can participate in of course right now because of covid um you know group events are kind of really on the we don't have a lot of those um but definitely those are events that we have done in the, the past and when it is deemed safe for us to do so again we will definitely offer those events again because that is what our office does 
Um, OK, so moving on to another question. Um, it says, can we apply for an internship in the first semester? Yeah, you can apply even from India for the internship, but the thing is that uh, you have to complete your 18 K R before you start your interns working on internship. So you can apply for any time. Even you, you can apply before coming here, but you will you can work uh, only once you complete your 18 K R. Right, so be applying for internships and then being eligible to apply are two different things. So mm -hmm. there are eligibility um, um, factors to consider. The office that is in charge of kind of providing that information is the ISSO office, and they can provide more information on OPT and also CPT. Okay. So the ISSO office um, is the office that can uh, provide uh, information, and on their website, they have a lot of information on um, kind of you know internships and then also after you graduate um, that that program as well. Um, OK, so here's another question. Um, oh, where did it go? OK, um, OK, so I think this 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 question was in regards to the slide that you had about the housing. It says how and when should we log into the housing portal? Could you repeat it again? Sure. Um, the question is how and when uh, should we log into the housing portal? Uh, I think this can, is about the slide that you had with the yeah, housing so, portal yeah, example. So yeah, so if you like, uh, if you want to rent an apartment in East on Frankfurt, just you can check it in any times. It's not like that uh, the website will be up in the morning or not. So you can find your apartment and you can do the full process is online, so you can access it anywhere, any times. And you will get to know which is the apartment and what is the structure of the apartment. You will get the idea that it, this thing is according to that, like room is there, two room is there, and how is the structure, like where is the living room and all. So you will get whole idea from the pictures that is provided on the website. So you can just go to the website and check it out. That's it. OK, um, and I just posted a link in the chat that has to do with accommodation. Someone was asking about housing accommodation. So if you look in the chat, if anyone has any questions about housing accommodations, what is near to the campus? How near is it? If you check out the link that I just posted in the chat right now, um, it will take you to the ICP website that has that information um, and you can review it um, and you know research, look into it and see what is helpful for you. Um, OK, here's another question. It says um, since it takes three to five days to get a comic card and then you know the the dart pass associated with that, how can I come? How can I commute? How can I commute till then to UTD? Hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Can, could you answer or could you repeat my question again? Sure. It I'm says yeah. yes. Yeah. It says since it takes three to five days to get a comic card. Yeah. Um, and the dark pass. How can I come? How can I commute? Um, till then to UTD. Yeah, so like uh, once you are here, the most probably you will get the airport pickups, then we will drop you to your uh, drop up location. And most of the students lived in either in east side or west side, but in the initial days, uh, you can use the UTD bus and uh, you have a I-20 and all the documents, uh, even I-20 and uh, they will not ask you. And uh, once if you are a UTD student, then you can use a UTD Dart bus, and that is available in east side and west side apart nearby apartments. So you can travel initial two or three days. Once you have a Comet card, then you can use all the Dart buses that are available in uh, Dallas area. Okay, and once again, the the airport uh, pickup um, is something that is a courtesy. It's a service that's done by the big Howdy team of volunteers that. We are ever so grateful for 
Um, so um, I think they typically uh, prefer another tip for the, the airport pickup is that you do have your information confirmed in terms of knowing where you are going because it's it's difficult to sign up for an airport pickup and then when they ask you you know where do you need to go then you don't know where you need to go so having that information figured out um, is going to be helpful because then you won't be able to complete the form um, of being able to tell them where you need to go and then because they need to arrange you know where everybody is going so knowing your knowing your destination um, is important um, to to fill in out that form um, okay here's another question it says is it fine to accommodate one or two more students than the ones who have signed the lease in order to save rent no, I I will not recommend this because uh, like for one V you can stay with two people and for two B two B most in most of the community that allows you for uh, four people should be there at two B two B apartment and I will never recommend this that you can get two or one or more people to just save the rent. Okay. Uh, next question, can you provide a checklist of items to get from India which aren't available in the USA? Yeah, these list we will cover in our next webinar tomorrow. So in the next okay. webinar we will include all these things. So this is the first session that we want to give you that is so essential like your buddy program, your pickups and what are the other services we gave you for the incoming students and in the next webinar we give you the list that what are the things you need to pack before coming here and pre arrival and post arrival things. OK, awesome. Um, next question um, says if wait, where did it go? OK, it says can can you apply for a student visa from another country other than my other than your citizenship? So I guess this person is saying that they want to apply for a student visa, but they are not in the country of their citizenship. Hmm. I think you have to contact with the uh, ISSO. Think ISSO. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they will yes. be a better <laughs> give you the answer. Yes, so the ISSO office is the office that deals with any questions about immigration, immigration paperwork. So your I-20, your I-94, anything that the US Embassy or consulate needs to process your uh, student visa or whatever type of visa you're on, that would be the ISSO office um, to ask them that particular question. Um, that would be a difficult one for us to answer. Um, OK, um, let's see. So we have already talked about that. OK, it says, is it safe to travel late after 9.45 p.m. classes from the university? Yeah, it is totally safe. It's fine because anyway you are going to uh, commute by bus only, so it is fine. I attended class from 7 to 9.45 and after that also we did sometimes uh, meetings for the ISA, some events and it is fine to commute after 9.45 or 10. And of course, as always, um, when you are traveling at night, you know, it's just um, helpful to, to, to take certain precautions um, because it's just anybody traveling at night, um, you know, just 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 be careful of your surroundings. Make sure that you're aware of what's going on. You know, if you're walking and you have two earbuds plugged into your ears and you can't hear anything that's going on, that might not be the safest thing to do. So just kind of have those general mindful um, uh, things to be mindful of. So um, OK, let's see. Okay, so this so this is asking when will the Google form for the furniture giveaway on Big Howdy open? I think so that uh, is yeah. yeah. So that, the funny. That is, I'm sorry. That is yeah, usually go ahead, that is usually done uh, and promoted uh, during the Big Howdy welcome party that will happen the first week of classes. They usually do not open the furniture giveaway uh, until the start of the semester. 
and one more thing and it is not uh, definitely necessary that everyone will get only few people will get and because uh, if you are coming here and uh, then most of the things are to be handled by you guys only and the big howdy people as always they help in pickups they help in, help in furniture giveaway but that is very limited and uh, because we will get around thousands of students international students and uh, it's not possible to give the furniture for everyone but that will be a very limited number yes thank you thank you for uh, making that clarification so the utd big howdy uh, program um, i will put their information i'll put their website in the chat uh, and the website in the chat so that you can refer to the website if they do have any updates um, available i'm not saying that the furniture giveaway feature is open right now but i'm just saying that whenever you do want to um, visit their website to find out about that information that would be the place for you to go to and also uh, excuse me <clears throat> we will be offering an information session just like this one with the big howdy team uh, you can find the information in the international orientation webpage uh, it will happen in about two weeks or so. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the date right now at hand, but uh, they will be talking about all the services that this community organization offer to all the new incoming students. So I will invite you all to join us. Uh, Tamara, do you have the date at hand? Um, I can look it up. OK, we, we will post the date uh, just for you to be aware that they will be going uh, into more detail concerning all the wonderful services that these community partners offer to international students. The information session has been posted. Thank you. OK, and that's going to be November the 30th. Um, so for everyone that's listening, it's Tuesday, November the 30th um, at 9 a.m. on Teams. OK, um, another question here. It says on average, how many days in a week will there be college for the graduate student? Say I'm picking about three classes per semester. So uh, it's that is also depend upon your class schedule. Yeah, you can choose three classes and you can complete three classes in the same day or you can do in two days or you can want you just want one class per day. So it's up to you. You can plan your calendar uh, schedule according to your availability, according to your interest. So that is up to you that uh, you want to in complete two classes in one day or one class each day. So if you are enrolling in three classes and you are uh, selecting the slot time slot like one classes for one day, then in three days you will complete all the classes. Good. OK, here's another question. Can we communicate? Can we commute by bicycle in the Dallas area? Yeah, you can commute, but uh, there are some bike lane uh, is available in most of the roads, so you can use the bike lane and please uh, wear all the necessary kits that like jackets or the light that will flash and will let other people that you or somebody is riding at least in the night so everyone can see you. Very good point. And if I could add a tip to that, Raj, um, yeah. <laughs> um, as the the police uh, chief Zach would usually present at orientation about uh, cyclists. Cyclists are supposed to follow the same road rules as cars. So um, just be careful. Um, Google Maps is a very good um, suggestion that I would suggest if you use Google Maps. Um, and if you use the view of maps where you can see like actual real life pictures, you can see what the streets are like because sometimes there are some areas that they do have a bike path and then all of a sudden the bike path will end and then you now have to ride your bicycle in the road. And then, you know, you ride your bicycle in the road until there's another bike path, hopefully on the sidewalk or something that or, you know, or like in a separate lane that you can get back into. So I would say there are bike paths here, but they typically don't tend to be very consistent. So if you check out Google Maps and get a picture view 
of, you know, the route that you think you want to travel that would give you um, kind of more accurate information. OK, uh, here's another question. It says, when will be the next ISA orientation? Yeah, so my team is currently working on the pickups things and wordy things, so maybe to one or two days we will announce the dates of our uh, next two webinars. So yeah, we will let you know guys in the WhatsApp group and on our Instagram handle or on our website. We will let you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's another question. It says, is there a way to schedule a call with the ISA team? Uh, could you repeat again? Sure. Is there yeah. a way to schedule a call with the ISA team? Yeah, you can. Once you are uh, joined any uh, ISA group, the all the admit groups you are, there will be around 26 members in there and all are there admin so you can connect with anyone and if you need any help or you want to any guidance you can connect with them and you can schedule any calls with them according to their availability okay. yeah. um here's another question um okay i'm not sure if you're able to answer this but it says what laptops do you suggest for computer science coursework yeah, so I'm getting this question so many times and yeah, it's up to you. It's depend upon them uh, which course you are enrolling like in somebody is enrolling in management course, then they do not need a high processor and all if you are enrolling any other courses, but recommended like uh, if you are enrolling in big data and other uh, machine learning courses, then you will definitely require a higher processor laptop. So it's up to you and for that courses as well, they mentioned that basic requirements and on the even UTD website, it is mentioned what is the basic uh, requirement for any laptop if you are graduate student. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so someone is asking, well, I'm not sure if you would know the answer to this, but it says, are there any computer science department specific WhatsApp and Facebook groups? No, but uh, I am just monitoring and there are some people those are asking question yeah, who all are there in from the computer science background and they are mm -hmm. making groups there and they are sharing the links in the WhatsApp mm -hmm. group that uh, from the ISA. So yeah, mm -hmm. you can connect during your group. So if once you join the ISA group, you will get to know at least uh, 257 people in that group. <laughs> yeah, you, you said at least 257 people. <laughs> yeah, so you will communicate and you will get to know yeah, what the things are going on and what are the other people are doing. So just please join the ISA group and most of the information you will get from there, even from the ISA team or from the other student as well, because sometimes it is maybe possible that there is some information that you required and same information is required by other people. So if you mm -hmm. put the question on that group, other people will might give the answer for you. Even ISA does not know the answer, but other people may know. So they will right. give you the better answer. So just post your questions on the WhatsApp group and most probably you will get the answer. OK, thank you. OK, um, here's another question. So it says so this I know that you, you spoke about the, the bank and the SIM cards. Someone is asking if you have a, any general idea as to when um, that um, service or information will be sent out about the bank and SIM card process. So the bank and SIM card process uh, information we generally provide you once we start pick up things. So like for pick up, we create WhatsApp group and also in that group we broadcast the message that this uh, service is available here. So once you are here, you will get the message on one day before that or two days once you are here. So you will get the information at the time we pick you from the airport. OK, thank you. Um, here's another question. Well, OK, we already spoke about that. About the OK. So there is a question here. OK, I think we've already answered that well, I think don't really see any new questions for anything that we have not already answered. Um, and for those people, for anyone that is listening, um, this this um, this uh, event is actually being recorded and will be available 
on YouTube. So if you were not able to catch it from the very beginning, or if you do need to re, uh, you know, listen to it or send it to um, someone, then you can do so. I will drop the link to the general YouTube channel. Uh, please allow two business days for the video to be uploaded so that you can get the information that you may have missed. And um, also in the chat as well, I saw Leticia dropped the link to our international orientation webpage. Um, it's that someone was asking about international orientation, which is a requirement for incoming students. So make sure that's something that you are working on, um, that you are taking care of completing those requirements so that you don't have a hold put on to your account. Um, OK, don't really see any new questions here in the chat. Let me make a look through a look through one more time. OK. Um, yeah, OK, mm. I think everything we have answered quite a bit of questions, Raj, quite a bit of information and help uh, that students are needed, but that is to be expected, right? When you're coming to a whole different country and you have to make all these different adjustments and learn all these, you know, these new concepts and everything that you're supposed to do and the time that you're supposed to do them. Um, do you have any, like maybe just a, a few general overall tips that you would recommend to the new incoming students that just like some general a general framework or some tips that you think could help them um, in their transition? Yeah, so just uh, it definitely it will be the just the first phase of your exciting journey to United States. Once you came here, ISA or Big Howdy people will pick you from the airport and uh, they will drop you to your drop up location and just you can just explore some nearby your places within 10 days or 15 days before your classes just try to explore as much as you want you can because once you start interacting with people you will feel like a home like that you feel in india as come the same way you will feel here all as well just try to connect with more people just try to interact with more people just go there go to a university try to interact with different departments, students are there. There are different dining uh, in dining offices. They are dining uh, hall is there. Though so many students are having lunch and dinner, and uh, you will get to know that so many people are there from the same place that you are. So just try to connect with everyone, and you will definitely feel like a home. And for the courses and all, please do not worry. If you graduated and you did undergrad from India, you can make it masters from here and you will get uh, so many opportunities to get the grades like from the assignments from the quiz it's uh, and from the exams it's not just only the quiz is there only the assignment is there you will get so many things in that way you can get a good grades as well so don't take the pressure for that as well and uh, once all the event try to just join so many events as much as you can because those events is for you guys only so in, join the events, uh, attend the events and interact with as much as uh, students as possible to you and don't take tension for anything. And if you require anything, ISA is there for you because we believe in service before survey self motto and we are here ready to help you guys. And there are so many people like big howdy people. They help you in most of the things they help you guys in the same way. ISA help in the same way. Big Audi people help you guys. So just let us know if you have any problem with related to anything. ISA and Big Audi and ICP is there with you guys. So just let us know if you have any problem. OK, awesome. And. Um, hmm, OK, before we head out, there was one question that actually came in. It says, can we apply for the comic card before arriving to the US? Uh, I don't think so because you have to be there at present. Even you can, uh, you don't need to apply in prior. You even apply for the same day and you will just get the times for there at what time you can pick the comic card, I think. Yes, yeah, and I just put the, um, in the in the chat, I put the website for the comic card because yes, typically you you have to register for classes um, and then you go physically into the office 
Um, there's some identification that um, that they typically ask for you to bring. Um, but if you check out the, the website I just put in the chat that goes linked directly for how to get a comic card um, and it shows you the requirements and the proof of things that you need to bring to them um, so that they can um, help you get your comic card. And then, you know, after that, you want to make sure to, to take care of getting the DART pass. So that just to clarify, the DART pass isn't an automatic thing. You want to make sure that you get your DART pass. It's something that you have to, you know, take care of because not everybody necessarily wants a DART pass. Maybe there are some students, they have cars and they don't really care to take the, the DART. And so they don't need a DART pass. So if a DART pass is something that you need, which we definitely recommend for you to get it because it's your way to travel around the DFW area um, and it's, you know, no extra charge. So just go ahead and get the DART pass. Um, okay, and okay, so there was, okay, there, I think this, this question was already posted, but about the checklist of items um, from India that they don't have in the United States. Um, did we already answer that one, Raj? Yeah, we answered that and okay. we will provide the detailed information in our next webinar. What are the things you need to pack right. before coming here? Yeah. Right, that's true. Yes, yeah. so pay. So so listen out for the next um, the next ISA orientation, then they're going to share that webinar because this this webinar has a, a lot of different content that was covered. And then um, the next webinar that they're going to do is going to kind of talk about other things that were not covered here. So just make sure to attend um, ISA's next orientation. Um, OK, well, um, we are going to go ahead and close out this um, information session for incoming international students presented by ISA. I would like to give a special thank you to Raj Kumar, ISA president. Also, thank you to I think it's Richa. Is it Richa? Um, is that how you pronounce her name, um, Raj? Yeah, Richa Shukla. Richa, OK, Richa Shukla. Yeah. Um, for working on the presentation and any other ISA team members that have worked in the presentation. Also, a special thank you to the ICP team that is here that was holding it down in the background. Uh, Leticia Zamaripa, Rodolfo Hernandez, and Flower Mwangi. Thank you all and everyone. Um, once again, this um, if you were not able to catch all of this information, it will be available on our YouTube page within about two business days. So you can rewatch and you can get um, any information that you may have missed. OK, well, everyone, please continue to stay safe. Um, bye for now, and we'll see you at the next information session next week. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Leticia. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, ICP. Thank you, Raj. Yes.